Hey everyone, welcome to Jersey Corner. I'm Casey Bryant, and welcome to a very special edition of Jersey Corner. Today is City Edition Jersey Day. Uh, the NBA has officially unveiled all 30 of their City Edition jerseys in such rapid succession. I haven't been able to talk about each one individually on my Twitter feed for those who follow me on Twitter, so I figured I would put all of my thoughts condensed into one place and one video. I'm excited. I'm repping my city proudly, uh, Poughkeepsie. Uh, this is the shirt of the street hockey league that my friends and I started in high school. So, um, repping proudly. It's, hold on, hold on. There, that's, uh, that's better. Uh, so this is, I, I didn't think I would ever get a chance to review this one. This is the Real Batiste basketball jerseys from the Spanish Basketball League, repping uh, family, Ryan Kelly, and uh, I don't know, because I'm so Spanish. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, here are my thoughts on the NBA City Edition jerseys. We're just going to go in alphabetical order, so let's get started. The Atlanta Hawks are celebrating their 50th anniversary, and they're doing so in style with a really sleek and clean jersey. When they, when they first leaked their court design with these colors months ago, I was mortified that this would be another just stupid unoriginal black jersey and I'm so happy it's not because honestly with these colors it would have looked too much like the Toronto Raptors current alternate with the with the black and the gold as it is right now you know it's it's stylish it's eye-catching it's got a white base with their modern font with the gold lettering and it's got this black and gold feather design going up the side which I actually think works really well certainly better than the USA Olympic hockey jerseys that came out back in February which just looks like someone spilled toothpaste on the sleeve. Overall, I dig this. I'm gonna give this a 6.8 out of 10. Wait, I thought the Boston Bruins were playing at Notre Dame this year, not the Boston Celtics. Yeah, what a shock, the Boston team is leaning into their fighting Irish style. That's not too different from their traditional road jerseys, but I like the gold accenting. I'll give these a 6.3 out of 10. The Brooklyn Nets. I didn't know what to think when I first saw these jerseys. I just didn't get what they were going for because I'm a dumb, uncultured white kid from the suburbs. The lining pays homage to Brooklyn legend Biggie Smalls. How does it do that? I'm still not exactly very sure. I just haven't Googled it yet, but it does. Uh, a lot of cities chose to pay tribute to a pop culture icon from their city. This is a rare explosion of color for the otherwise monochromatic black and white Brooklyn Nets. If this is what you want from a jersey, great. Uh, me personally, I'm still waiting for a current, current throwback of the New York Nets jersey. I think that would be really cool, but as it stands right now, I'll give these a 7 out of 10. Charlotte Hornets. Ugh. God. Who boy. Okay, the first of the BFBS jerseys for this year. What does BFBS stand for? It stands for Black for Black's Sake. Last year, they had this like gradient zigzag design on the side, and fans didn't really like that, so the jersey designer said, hey, why don't we replace it with this year? And they said, how about nothing? And they said, great, publish it, pass, 2.3 out of 10. These jerseys are based off of the city flag of Chicago. Nobody tell them that the flag is actually white. That shade of blue on black looks too much like the 90s Cavaliers for me, which, nah, doesn't really do it for me. 5.0 out of 10. Speaking of Cleveland, I do not understand the hate that these have been getting at all. These are getting massacred online, but I really like them. I think they're colorful, they're fun. I mean, yeah, they're unconventional, but it's better than having just another black jersey, and it's better than anything I think the wine and gold color scheme could produce. So I think it's a great combination of the 80s color scheme with the 90s design, Listen, fans revolted against the Islanders' fisherman design when they first came out too, and now fans are begging for them to bring it back as their alternate. So, y'all are gonna come around on this. I promise. I'm gonna give these a 6.9 out of 10. When I said just another black jersey, this is what I meant. Awful, gross, boring, garbage. 2.0 out of 10. Thank you. Next. These might be my favorite of the bunch. I don't know. Uh, the 90s Nuggets jerseys are cult classics, you know? And I think this is the perfect way to bring them into 2018. You eliminate the yellow piping, you use the modern font, and you fade in the white background so it's not 
quite so loud with the rainbow design. It's still colorful, it's still beautiful, but it's not quite as hard on the retinas. I think these are gorgeous, and I, I think I'm gonna buy one of these, honestly. I'm gonna give these a 9.1 out of 10. Beautiful. The Detroit Pistons. The Detroit Pistons have some of the most joyless jerseys in the NBA. Uh, there really just isn't much to dissect. The road lines down the middle are cute, but it just doesn't inspire much in a fan, so I don't know. I'm going to give these a Slim Shady 8 Mile Middle Finger, and I'm going to give these a 4.2 out of 10. The Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets. I'll do these simultaneously because they really accomplish the same kind of thing. They both honor Asian heritage in a colorful, intricately designed way. Unlike the Charlotte and Detroit designs, you can tell that a lot of time and care went into bringing these concepts to life. From the color schematics, to the logo design, to the lining, you can tell that a lot of detail and thought were put into these. And honestly, I think they're executed wonderfully. Even if the colors aren't yours, you gotta respect the work and the effort that went into these jerseys. And for what it's worth, I think they both came out fire. I'm gonna give these an 8.8 .8 out of 10. The Pacers went with a modern nod to the 90s Flojo jerseys, which we just talked about on this show, and I think it really came out okay. Wait, wasn't the Flojo swoop on the right side, not on the left? So are these a Flojo tribute? I guess not. I don't know what these are going for then. I do know that it would be better if it was white and not gray, because gray jerseys are awful. Gray jerseys should get the same fate as great people. Just let it die. Let the circle of life churn out something new and better. Uh, whatever. 5.9 out of 10. Next. The LA Clippers. This is another jersey where I just don't get where the hate is coming from. A lot of people dislike this jersey and again, I think it's really good. I'll explain why. The 80s style LA text is reminiscent of both the LA Gear Shoe Company and the moving star logo of the 1984 LA Olympics, which was the Clippers first year in the city. They've got five stars on the side for the five Olympic rings, and the color scheme itself is derivative of the Team USA look. Granted, the Olympic US basketball team has won a championship or two, so it's not quite applicable to the Clippers, but I do see what they were going for. They're trying to encapsulate what the LA sports scene was like in 1984. But again, if I were the Clippers, I would be trying to erase my history. I would be trying to make sure that no one found out what we were like in our past and just try to keep moving forward. But again, you do you. And as a broadcaster, I appreciate the nod to 40-year play-by-play guy Ralph Lawler, who's retiring at the end of this season. I think that's a really classy move, so I don't know, I think I'll give these a passing grade. I'm gonna give these a 7.1 out of 10. These look dreadful. The black text on black pinstriping with black lining looks really, really muddy. Spelling out the full name of the team, Los Angeles Lakers, like we're gonna confuse them for another Laker team, or we'll actually start to think about the fact that there are no lakes in Los Angeles, or California for that matter. Uh, using text to make the pinstripes, what did Conor McGregor design your jersey? Plus, you can pay homage to the Showtime Lakers all you want. Pretty sure the Showtime Lakers play defense once in a while, alright guys? So, until that happens, or unless Tyson Chandler finds a time machine to go back to his 2010 self, I'm gonna say that these like the Lakers, will not be anything more than the middle of the pack out in the Western Conference. I'm going to give these a 4.8 out of 10. The Memphis Grizzlies chose to pay tribute to their city's close ties with professional wrestling by making their jersey look like a championship belt. Weird flex, but okay. I mean, that is the closest that the Memphis Grizzlies will get to a championship of any kind. The base of the jersey is gray for steel chairs and cages, and not because Nike just wants to shove gray down our throats. The wrestling fan in my office want wanted me to tell you all that the steel chairs used in the WWE are not gray, they are black. Anyone would be able to tell you that. Also, the championship belt that that guy is holding in the picture is designed incorrectly. The weight class championship token would be on one of the side jewels. The main buckle of the belt 
would be the WWE logo as it's been for several years. So the layout is, I, th I don't care. Look, forget the belt, which, which is corny in of itself. I'm more caught up in the fact that with the font that they're using and the nameplate being underneath the number, these look exactly like a WNBA jersey. Right? I can't be the only one that sees this, right? I, I don't know. 4.5 out of 10. This is most people's winner for best jersey of the bunch, and I can totally see why. I mean, the Miami Vice concept is baller. No argument there. And as much as I resist the black alt wave, these are gorgeous. I mean, I think the black base actually accentuates the color even more than the white base did, even though... Like, white suits were kind of Miami Vice's thing, so like, this kind of strays from the Miami Vice guy? Whatever, I'm overthinking this. 9.2 out of 10. Great. Jesus. These, these easily win my worst of the bunch award. And not even because the colors suck, which they do. These look absolutely ridiculous. Giannis Atentacumbo is from Greece, guys. Not Australia. I didn't think I was gonna have to bring these back, but here they are. These are not Greece's or the box colors. The design is supposed to be reminiscent of the old Milwaukee Mecca floor, but within minutes there were better iterations of that concept on the Twitterverse. You took an idea that had like a 1 in 10 chance of succeeding and did everything in your power to bungle this whole situation. The colors are bad, the follow through is bad, this jersey is historically bad. 1.5 out of 10. Get these away. If Miami and Denver aren't your favorite designs, then these probably top your list. The Minnesota Timberwolves tribute to Prince. Have you ever seen a state like so devastated by the passing one of their hometown heroes? In this generation, I'll say, that Minnesota has about Prince. I mean, Prince died a couple of years ago at this point, but as soon as he did, the Minnesota Wild changed their goal song to Let's Go Crazy. Now you've got the Timberwolves rocking these. I mean, I'm not complaining. I just, I just think it's fascinating. Clearly, more celebrities need to have signature colors. When I die, I'm sure Poughkeepsie will be so in mourning that everyone will be walking around in hoodies and sweatpants and listening to Streetlight Manifesto. I'm going to have the same kind of cultural impact, clearly. Anyway, these get a 9.0 out of 10. Like the Nuggets, the Pelicans took an old design and modernized it. This one came from the New Orleans Jazz from many years ago. I think it looks really clean. You've got the green, yellow, and purple striped and piped across the jersey. It's efficient, it's gorgeous, it will likely be worn by many a frat bro at LSU house parties. I'll give these an 8.7 out of 10. At first glance, I was kind of underwhelmed by the Knicks Navy Alt because, you know, we've seen the checkerboard design before, and I really liked the FDNY design they had last year for their city edition, so to see them just go with plain white block text, it seemed like a step backward to me. It looks actually kind of similar to the Rangers Winter Classic design that they had back in January. But what makes it for me is the side stripes. They're not just your traditional parallel, even stripes down the side. It's a New York City skyline. That's a good touch, you know. It borders on cheesy, but I think it's effective. And plus, as you're running down the court, it looks like the colors are bleeding behind you. Like, damn bro, you're running so fast that the jersey can't even keep up. You're breaking the light color spectrum. These get a passing grade for me. 8.4 out of 10. The Thunder went in kind of a similar direction as the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets, only instead of honoring Asian heritage, they chose to pay tribute to the indigenous people of Oklahoma City and the state of Oklahoma and Central United States. Well done, Oklahoma City. That is not something that we see very often, at least not tactfully. This is how you pay respect to Native American culture. It doesn't have to be explained away, it's not problematic in any sense, it just is. This gets a rousing round of applause from me, way to be thunder, this gets an 8.6 out of 10. I mean, what do I even say about these? They're so boring. I mean, the Orlando Magic had some of the silliest designs of last year with that, with that Starry Night design going across the torso. So people clearly were sitting in a boardroom, they were like up against a deadline, it was the last day, and they're like, well, fans really hated that last year, but like we have to do something, so we'll just keep it to the side. What should we put on the main torso? How about nothing? Great idea, Stevenson. Brilliant. Great idea. Promotion. I mean, these are stupid. Just, just so stupid and unimaginative, and, and the star design is just absolutely 
ridiculous. Thank God this team is sponsored by Disney because these are goofy. 1.4 out of 10. You know how Minnesota paid tribute to an icon from their state that, that really meant a lot to them sentimentally? Well, Philadelphia kind of did the same thing. That a doo-doo doesn't exist. Uh, what was it that Bill Burr said about Philadelphia? The whole pride of your city is built around a guy who doesn't even exist. You got Joe Frazier is from there, but he's black, so you can't deal with them. Look, jokes aside, this is begrudgingly, I'll admit, a fun idea that I enjoy personally because I love the Rocky franchise, but I admit that you have to kind of think a little too hard in order to really get the full appreciation for it. You guys all gonna go see Rocky 19? Yeah, dude, I think you can win! These only exist to promote Creed 2 in theaters this Thanksgiving, but like... If you really think about it, Rocky is the ultimate underdog story and the Philadelphia 76ers are trusting the process. You know, Rocky's got the, the gray sweatsuit which symbolizes his blue collar, hard nosed work ethic and Philadelphia wants to have the same kind of mentality when they take the court. But then you also have the red, white, and blue, which is the team's color scheme, yes, but also the color scheme of Apollo Creed. The flair, the panache, the showmanship, the entertainment value, and most importantly, the success, the championships, which is something that Philadelphia is very close to attaining, perhaps even closer now that they've acquired Jimmy Butler. So you know what? There's more to this than meets the eye. I'll give this a 7.2 out of 10 begrudgingly. Honoring cultures is hard. So the Phoenix Suns put the Spanish word for the on the front of their jersey and called it a day. 3.1 out of 10. Meh. Seen it. 4.9 out of 10. The Sacramento Kings. Another one. H haven't we seen this before? The Kings pretty much just took their powder blue layout and replaced the Lion basketball logo with the word Sacktown. If I was from Sacramento, Sacktown is not a, a tough name. It's not like Rich City. Maybe I'm just immature, but like... Sacktown! <laughs> oh god, maybe it's because the Kings play like Oh, uh, 5.1 out of 10. Next. <laughs> Sacktown. What? I, I can't see it. Don't they have? A City Edition jersey this year? I, I don't see it. I don't see- Oh wait, yes I do. I've seen it before. 3.9 out of 10. Next. Seen it. I, I, come on, this is exactly what I was worried about at the top of the show with Atlantis. You just inversed your color scheme, so now you've got two white, gold, and black jerseys out there. I've seen it before. 5.5 out of 10. Next. Seen it! But I love it. 8.0 out of 10. Well done, Utah. The final BFBS jersey. I mean, it isn't bad, it's just, it's lifeless. DC has like a great color palette and great jersey design. I don't know, you couldn't have thrown in a nod to the Baltimore Bullets? You couldn't have put in a nod to like the Jordan era blue with like Gilbert Arenas colors or something? Or like a tribute to the Washington Generals? I don't know, something. I'm disappointed, I'm not surprised, but I'm disappointed. I don't know, 4.1 out of 10. Such a ho-hum note to end on. So those are the 2018-19 NBA City Edition jerseys. A lot to like in there, a lot to dislike. Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? Which ones do you want to yell at me for for giving a completely wrong score to? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe to my channel. Check out any of my other Jersey Corner reviews. I've got plenty more basketball reviews in there if you want to poke around. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. And we'll see you next time on Jersey Corner.